Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some funny time together. You know, uh, there's many prophets uh, exist in the world today and before. Like as an example, me myself, I predicted that in winter is going to get cold. And I predicted, predicted, sorry, that many women, as we speak, they have their period, which nobody knows. But Muhammad, he have always a special prediction. Like he is the one who predict that the sun set in murky water and we discover is true. He is the one who discover that uh, if the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl. If the men have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. He is the one who discover that women have a sperm coming from their ribs, men have a sperm coming from his backbone. He discover a lot of things. He discovered that hail is coming from mountains in heaven. And Allah, he have a sledgehammer and he break hail and he throw it at the one he don't like. But today our topic is different. About Gog and Magog. I'm sure this picture in front of you making you excited, isn't it? Gog and Magog. What is Gog and Magog according to Muhammad? How the Prophet knew about Gog and Magog? What the Prophet said about Gog and Magog? Yet the Kuffar, they say the Prophet is not a Prophet when he told us things nobody knows. Only Prophet of Allah, he knew about Gog and Magog. Let us start talking about Gog and Magog. Gog. Magog. Today we will tell you about the prophecy of the prophet. like to be tall and you are short commercial break you can take a medicine it's called get one get a three time twellers you will become like a cedar tree as the prophet of allah said about the people of gog and magog call our muslim number one nine hundred adult gog and magog each one of them is taller than a cedar tree And Muhammad, he said, each one of them is in the height of 120 arms. I never thought they are so short like this. That's very short. You see, I'm trying to show you the hadith, but my mouse is not functioning. <laughs> Gog and Magog. <laughs> what happened to my mouse? <laughs> Hold on. I hope it's not... Uh... <clears throat> Give me a second. I don't know really what happened. What happened? <laughs> I think we opened a website, a Muslim website, and uh, my so security software block, uh, block it. So I cannot, hold on. What's happening here? Okay, let's try this. Uh, 
I uh, disconnected my mouse and I connected again. <clears throat> okay, come on, we're gonna talk about Gog and Magog now. Don't make me like reset my, my streaming again. All right, Gog and Magog, I think now it's working. So Gog and Magog, the prophet he said, قلت يا رسول الله صفهم لنا O Messenger of Allah Describe them for us He said There are three kinds Three kinds Some of them They are like a cedar tree A man he said And what is that cedar tree? He said it's a tree exist in a sham which means Syria and etc. And it is 120 arms high in the sky. Those are the one nothing can stop them, no arms, no, I mean, nothing can match their horses too and their arms. And kind of them which he sleep inside his ear and he cover himself with the other ear <laughs> and they will never pass by any elephant or a beast or a camel or a pig but yet they will eat it and if one of them he die they will eat him too the beginning of them is in the Sham, which means in Syria, the natural Syria, not Syria, the border today. And the end of them is in Khorasan. They drink the rivers and the lakes from the east all the way to the lake of Tabaria, which now is exist in Israel. Now for sure, the Muslim, they will say to you, this is the Eif. This is the Eif Hadith. <laughs> but according to who? <laughs> it's the Eif according to who? Huh? You know, I mean, Muhammad, he really he have a strong imagination. Uh, If we search this hadith all over the internet, we will find all the stories and it's approved by Muslims. And actually, this is why you are writing it. If it's not right, if the story is fabricated, why it's in your book anyway? As an example here, the book of Majma al Zawaid. And this is IslamWeb.net. And here is the hadith. Shall we translate to English? Let us translate. Because maybe Christian Prince is not telling the truth. You know, as the Muslims, he never tell the truth. Even though he's showing them the reference in front of them, the screen, but he's lying. Hello? He's always lying. I asked the Messenger of Allah about Gog and Magog. Hadith number 12572. Nation. Gig of Magog, every nation, 400,000 nation. From every nation of them, there's a one. That, look, look. Every nation of Gog and Magog divided into 400,000 nations. <sighs> True story. And one of them, he die. When one of them, he die, he will not die until he have 1,000 male baby. <sighs> And each one of them he will be carrying a weapon to fight they are war warrior each one of them you know the Muslim are confused about those are are they human or not obviously they are not I mean 120 arms and this they were one sleep inside his uh, uh, his ear I mean what kind of ear is that ear I mean it's the size of a size of a tent and you can slap inside your ear I mean this is even stupid so 
and uh, each one of them when he die translation is not too much accurate will give you will give 1000 baby before he die 1000 i said mr of allah describe them for us he said there are three kinds uh, let's say three species <laughs> may allah protect your species <laughs> Species, eh? So, brother, there are the three species. Yeah. Now, the prophet, when he said there are three species, obviously the prophet, he knew what he's talking about. We have to, to put that into consideration. The prophet, he never says something unless he is sure from it. Remember, this is, this is always a prophecy. This is not Muhammad speaking from his own pocket. Here, the prophet is telling you what nobody really knows. So he said there are three species. Many of them are like the translation he is summarized because the word arz, the same as the arroz, it's kind of rice, but I mean, it's very close as a writing. It is a cedar tree, not rice. Like the cedar tree, I said, what is cedar tree? He said, it's a tree in the Levant. This is a translation. A length of the tree is a 20 and a hundred cupid in the sky. They are short. You know what? I thought that one day I will hear about somebody is taller than me. I'm so disappointed. 120 arms in the sky only? They are even taller than Adam, my friend. Is it Muhammad? He says that Adam is 60 arm tall. <laughs> The message of Allah said, uh, the translation here says, those who does not have horses or iron. Actually, but what it's meant, I mean, like nothing work with them. No horses can fit with them. No, like nothing can work with them. They are so powerful. And the second uh, uh, nation, or let us say class of the nation, is the one who uh, they sleep inside their ear and they cover with the other one and they do not pass nor by a monster or an elephant or a pig but yet they eat it and when one of them he die they eat him too I mean, this is must be a prophet telling the truth, which nobody knows. How the prophet he knew this? Now, if we go in the Quran, because the Muslim can play games and say there are some stories were not accepted, blah blah blah. You know the game. Hmm? But the Quran speak about them, and they cannot say the Quran is not right too. Anything is embarrassing. Muslims, they say, Muhammadan, they say, we don't accept it. What about the Quran? Zul Qurnayn, the guy with the two horn, who found where the sun set, he found it sitting in murky water. He changed direction and he found where the sun rise. And this is a prediction of the Prophet Muhammad. Because before that, nobody knows that there is a land where the sun rises. You know, for some time we thought that the sun rises everywhere, but obviously it does not. Only Prophet of Allah was able to predict, predict this, that yes, the sun rises in certain areas. It's a land actually. So here the story of Alexander the Great the guy who went all the way to the end of the world and he found where the sun set and he found where the sun rise additional prediction but because this is not our topic now we will not talk about it as you see here it says Zulkarnain the man with the two horn and by the way why he's called the man with two horn the prophet he told us because when he came to his people Tell them to worship Allah. 
they hit him with the hammer in their in his head and I have to be honest with you we Middle Eastern we use hammer all the time when somebody come to us to say to us worship God we hit him with the hammer commercial break if your wife she is threatening you to, th to to use the hammer against you buy right now a new brand new hammer it is made just 20 years ago because it is connected get the hammer so you can run away from your wife or your mother-in-law in case she is going to use a hammer against you the same as what happened to the Qurnayn. end of the commercial If you are going down and you do not know what to do, I can tell you the solution. Call our 1-800 rumba right, right away, right now. Actually, we have a caller. Yes, caller. Yes, what's your problem? You are going down. Don't worry, my friend. We are going to preserve for you a one-way ticket. You are the lucky man to Afghanistan. You will spend your vacation there. One-way ticket because you will never come back anyway. Coming back. where the sun set he found it going down in the black sea black sea i mean where is the what, is, what it says in the in the arabic black sea it says a spring of water you idiot liar black sea <laughs> i mean a spring of water became a black sea unbelievable it says Ainun Hamia. so the prophet he predict that and this has been discovered to be true and actually even the prophet he explained this verse which the Muslim tried to run away from it. What it says. <sighs> I'm typing in English again. Look at the Prophet. How he was able to discover this. I was sitting behind the Messenger of Allah. Take a note. Never sit in front of the Prophet of Allah. Because he have a, a power of six of 4,000 men. You are responsible for what will happen to you if you sit in the front of him in a donkey. This guy is very careful. He sat behind him. I was sitting behind the Messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting. He asked, do you know? Do you know where this sat? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, <laughs> ignorant, <laughs> fool. <laughs> Let me teach you. It said, in a spring of warm water you know the one who keep asking questions have nothing to do with our topic I will block you my friend either you are here for the topic or you are not don't act like a kid huh don't act like a kid be mature you don't enter a classroom talking about mathematics and you ask about geography now we are talking about geography who care about this journalist you are are you an idiot Focus, focus. Which one is more important? We are talking about saving life of people being deceived by this fool. You are worried about a journalist. He's not a journalist. He's a terrorist. Admin, anyone, he posed a question, have nothing to do with our topic. Give him a time up and then block him if he continue. Uh... Uh, hold on we have a muslim uh, muslim uh, 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 proper he said something very important i have to do with the topic you know i like muslim proper he is very good where is the text where is muslim proper hold on let me show you how the muslim they are very consistent Mr. Abbas, he said this. And this is how the Muslims, the Muhammad and the refute us, the worshippers of Muhammad, the black, the black stone kissers. And yet they are not pagans. You are pagan. They kiss black stone, yes. 
but they are not pagan. Why? Why you want us Muslim to believe everything written by every Muslim? Warning, please. Don't believe whatever Muslim write. Abbas, he warned you. Muslims are a bunch of liars according to Abbas. Do you see it? Be my witness. Why you want us to believe everything written by every Muslim? Do you believe everything written by every Christian? You idiot, this is everything written by Christian. What, what, what everything? We have the Bible. Those are written by our church father. Yes, we believe in it. How come you don't? Isn't it Quran says to you that you have to obey the Prophet and obey Allah and follow whatever the Prophet he says? So you have to follow the Hadith. How come you are saying to me now that Allah did not preserve the Hadith of the Prophet? So Islam is not preserved. Because Islam is not exist without the Hadith. And now you are saying to me, you cannot believe everything everyone said, but this is your prophet said. They are not saying I said, they are saying the prophet said. And look, it says here, Sahih in chain. Nothing wrong with it. Anything is embarrassing, they say to you, do you want us to believe whatever Muslim they say? No, we don't. Actually, I'm saying to people, never believe one word the Muslim he say to you. You are right. Liars. Liars, liars. He admit, he agree, that we Muslim will lie about our prophet. We fabricate his stories not there. Well, if it is fabrication, why it's there? Why you write it? Why you, why you print it? You see here right away you will see the stupidity and the lie because it's embarrassing because if it was a lie you will not write it down you will say this is garbage we'll take it away actually Ibn Ishaq he said many things does not fit with the prophet I did not even put it there God knows what how many things we lost it doesn't fit so he decide what fit what doesn't fit his majesty he decide what it fit so this is after filtration not before so the son, anyway, he like it, you like it. It's it's in front of you. This is this is Sahih book, authentic book. You see, if we ask Muslims, how many books of authentic there is for Muslim Sunni? They say six, and this is one of them. This is one of them, and in total agreement with the Quran. It is in total agreement with the Quran. The Quran says he found the sun sitting in murky water. The Quran said that. That's not, it's not like, it's not something against the Quran. He found it going down into a, a murky spring of water, not a black sea. That's a lie. You change the translator right away, you will find it is a spring of water. So he reached the place where the sun set, Muhammad claiming that there is a guy, his name is Zulkarnain. Obviously, this is a story about Alexander the Great, who supposedly occupied most of the earth, known earth at that time for him. And uh, uh, he conquered a huge part of the earth. And he used to warrior like a hat, have two horns. And this is what the Roman used to do. And according to Muhammad, the guy with the two horns. So Muhammad, he took a fiction story written by a person. He is from Syria fiction story about Zulkarnain, which is a true person, but the story is fiction. Then he put it in the Quran, proving to us that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. And then he continued. When he arrived there, he found uh, people. Why the Gospel of Thomas? Do you accept it? Have we see, well, guys, we don't call it Gospel. So how we can call it gospel? You see, Abbas, you are just a kid, my friend. This is not a gospel. You can write now a book and you call it a gospel too. <laughs> because for us to agree with something, like you Muslim, you keep saying there is a book, it's called the, the Gospel of Barnabas. Do you accept it? You yourself don't accept it. <laughs> so this is silly. So for us, we are the believers, which mean we believe in what we have. Anything else is not our belief. You are the believer and you believe in this. And now you are trying to deny it. 
You see the difference? If the Muslim reject the book of Al, uh, uh, Al Turmudi or Ibn Majah or etc., I will say, okay, they reject it. That's it. You know, it's not an Islamic book, so we don't accept it. I'm not quoting for you from a book is rejected by Muslims. I'm quoting for you from your Quran and from books is written by you, accepted by you, and you call it authentic. Potato. Is it different? I'm not quoting for you a book written by a Christian prince about Muhammad. I'm quoting for you the Quran. I'm quoting for you what your prophet said. I'm quoting to you what your prophet said according to you, Muslims. What you are saying to me, this is not according to us. Who is the one who, what, what, what do you name those people who follow that, that book you, you, you are you're not naming for me? Nobody. Nobody follow it. If somebody follow it, then you can, you can question him about that. But you follow this. This is your religion. Who decide the book of the Bible? The church father. And we have manuscript for it. If we don't have manuscript, then we don't approve it. Very simple. And second, secondly, you idiot. The Bible is book of books. It's not only one book. But anyway, they try to take away the topic about the embarrassment statement and teaching of their prophet. Abbas, does the verse say that he found the sun sitting in murky water or I'm lying? Does the verse say that you're a prophet saying, that Allah saying, that Zulkarnain he found the sun sitting in murky water or we are lying? This is the question. It's in the front of you. Does it say that or not? He found it sitting in a spring of hot, muddy water. Who is saying that? Allah. Are you going to say now Allah? Word is rejected. Do you accept the Quran or not? And if those hadith are not authentic, why you say they are authentic? Hey, Khalid, Khalid, just wait, man. We have a topic. Hold on. When we say Muslims can call us, we will tell you call us. So here you see how they cry when we show you the truth. They are a prophet explaining the Quran. They don't like it. Embarrassing. And then this guy, he keep going because we want to talk about Gog and Mako. And then he reached the land where the sun is rising, the rising of the sun. Actually, this fast translation. It says, Hatta balaga matli ashams until he found where the suns rise and he found it rising on a people okay how hold on i mean how you can switch this one how you can fabricate this lie to cover it how you can add a makeup to it it doesn't work because he found the sun rising on people well the sun rise all over all people in the world so he went nowhere then the only way to accept this story if what it says that he went to a place where the sun come from and let us show you that Muhammad he got those people busted if we go Muhammad he will teach you and now we will show you authentic so Abbas he will not get upset because if Abbas he get upset he will eat your pizza Read with me. Uh, let us see. <laughs> what Abbas will say now? Watch the, watch the tears. Watch the tears. We, we, we show you this one. Let us show you something else. Hmm. Oh, Abu Dhar. This is Al-Bukhari. This is Al-Bukhari. This is what? Al-Bukhari. And he is mentioning here that this is interpretation for the verse 36, 38. Chapter 60, 36, verse number 38. Read carefully. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque at the sun and some said, he said, Oh, Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun set? Muhammad, he loved it when you say to him, Allah and his prophet know best. Muslims are mushrikeen. Muslims, they associate the knowledge of Allah 
their God with the knowledge of a man. They don't say Allah knows best. They say Allah and his messenger. I replied, Allah, his apostle knows best. He said, it goes, it goes underneath the throne of Allah. And this is what the Quran is saying. And the sun runs into a fixed course. The Muslim, they have videos about those uh, verses saying this is about one day the earth will uh, 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 will stop rotating and will collapse, blah, 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 blah. And this is the term uh, Muhammad was talking about every day, sun, claiming it is moving and going under the throne of Allah. Let us show you more hadith. And remember, this is Al-Bukhari. What they will say now? Why well, you are showing us Al-Bukhari? Al-Bukhari is a scam. I agree, all of you are following a scam. What about this one? What about this one? Hmm? Al-Bukhari again, very authentic. The Prophet asked me at the sunset, do you know where the sun goes at the time of the sunset? I replied, Allah and his apostle know better. He said it goes, I eat trouble. Hey Abbas, do you agree with this or not? Is that a fabricated hadith too? Abbas now is delivering pizza. So according to Muhammad, he knew where the sun set, the Quran told him. He knew where the sun rise, the Quran told him. And he knew that the sun travel every day. And he knew that the sun run into a course. And this is the everyday course. Who said that, Muhammad? The hadith in front of you. He said, it goes, I eat, travel, tell. Prostrate <coughs> itself, sorry, underneath the throne and take permission to rise again. I mean, can we make it more simple than this? Can we? Muhammad saying so. What they will say now? Muhammad is a liar. They cannot say that, so they will accuse the one who wrote the hadith saying fabrication, but this is the most authentic book for Muslims, Sahih al-Bukhari. And he is the one who is saying that this is what it meant in the Quran, that the sun runs into a fixed course for a term and degree. Let us continue. Then after Zulqarnayn, he found where the sun set and the sun rise, he continued. And then he found two mountains. <sighs> he found two mountains? What about them? Drama. Next to the mountains, they found a people who hardly understand the word. <laughs> Guys, those people, they hardly understand the word. But then they start talking to them. Like what? They hardly understand the word and you are talking to them? So, who could hardly understand the word? They said, Zulkarnain, surely Gog and Magog, make me sheep. How they cannot speak, and you cannot understand what they are saying. And then they say to you, Are you there, Abbas? I mean, those people hardly can understand the word. Suddenly they became engineers. Suddenly they are telling him what to do to build a dam, to do this, to block them. Uh, they, are, they don't understand the word. They are stupid. They are. They, we don't know what they are saying. We don't speak their language. They can't understand the word. And now, and then they say to him, like, "What the heck?" Actually, let me show you. Uh, let me find the uh, in, in one of the interpretation. Uh, somebody asked. I think it was Ibn Abbas, like Abbas here. 
Uh, hold on, let me find it for you. In the tafsir of al, al baghawi let me find it. Give me a second. <coughs> Which is the master of many scholars on Islam, al baghawi That's why Ibn Kathir keep quoting him. All right, we found it. They ask him, but how they cannot understand, but yet they were answering, talking. He said they have translators. <laughs> This is the Muslim book, not my book. The Muslims asking questions to the highest scholar. How they can understand when they don't understand? What the answer is? Read with me. Use Google Translation again. It was asked how they say like they don't understand, and yet I mean translation is kind of funny. And yet they can speak and you know he said he spoke about them with the translator <laughs> this is a nation he never met before suddenly he have a translator for them he have a translator so it says which means they are stupid But a Muslim who claim to be a scholar, he have to find a solution for this big fat lie. Oh, they have a translator properly, brother. Nazir, do you have a problem with this, Nazir? Nazir, are you having trouble with this? In the... <laughs> okay. We have, a, we have a gentleman, his name is Khalid. I hope Khalid will call me and we will talk about the topic, Khalid, right? We don't, want, we don't want to go out of the topic. You know what I'm talking about, right? So let me open Skype, uh, sorry, Pal Talk for you, uh, Mr. Khalid. And uh, let us see what you want to say to us. Remember, we're going to talk about, because we want to finish this uh, Gog and Magog story. And maybe your help is, can be uh, great. To understand what your prophet is doing. By the way, if you don't understand my English, I have a translator for you. Translator. All right. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Khalid. Uh, can you text me, my friend? I don't see your text from me. What is your name there? Can you text me? See, Khalid, you said you want to, you know, talk to me, right? Here we go. I am in Pal Talk now. Where are you? Hmm. All right. I didn't see any text from you. If you don't text me immediately, I'm going to ignore you. All right. All right. Let us continue. Give him time to log in. Maybe he's not there. But look like he is just playing games. <clears throat> so, obviously, Muhammad is a fabricator, and Muslims they try to fabricate another fabrication to cover the lie of of Muhammad. And the Muslims they try to find a you know a solution for this nation Gog and Magog. How we can fix it? 
how we can fix the lies of Muhammad. Then the story, or let us say the drama continue, that then the people of Gog and Magog, they say to him, can you build for us a dam? What is the purpose of the dam? To stop the Gog and Magog, which Muhammad described them, there are three kinds. One of them is very tall, 120 arms long, for a cupid, tall. And the other one, uh, you know, uh, they have ears like ears of pigs and they sleep inside the, inside it. And, uh, and, you know, and each one of them before he die, he will have six to the point he will have 1,000. Uh, he have Skype only. Okay, then don't waste my time. I'm not using Skype. I'm using Pad Talk. You want to, uh, okay, forget it then. So all this drama, I want to talk to you, or talk to you and uh, to say to me, I use Skype only. Okay, Mr. Skype only. Yeah. Why you don't want to, uh, Muhammad Hamza, it look like you have a beard of somebody. Are you his girlfriend? Why you don't uh, call me Muhammad Hamza in Palto? Let us see how good you are. Hmm? All of you are potatoes. We are hero in the chat. Chat heroes. All of you. We wait for you. And by the way, there is not a single person he can claim to be a scholar. He can answer anything. And those who try to refute, look at them in the chat. I mean, what 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 the topic is? Zulqar Nain, he built a dam. What is the question? What is the dam? Look at the dam answer. <laughs> <laughs> and now is the problem. Is it Skype or it's Pal Talk? It's Pal Talk. You're going, you know, if you want to answer me, who cares? It's a software for free. You download it for two seconds. When we open Skype, where you been? I was using Skype for the last 12 years, maybe more. Well, you did not call me. <laughs> so now if I go to Skype, they will say go to Paltalk. <laughs> so guys, he built a dam. And this dam is to stop the people of Gog and Magog, who they are, you obviously look like they are not a human. They are so tall, some of them, 120 cubit, as Muhammad said. They have ears, they can sleep inside them and cover themselves with the other ear, which even elephant don't cannot do that. And they have a sexual uh, uh, ability to the point before they die, look like they're women, they like uh, their, their wives, I mean, they have babies like rabbit, you know, 1000 male baby before a person he die so how how many human like how many a human being how many baby he can have before he die yeah, you know this those gog and magog 1000 from each one person so if they are so much by number and each one of them is 1000 he will make before he die so what is the percentage to the human being race will be think about it if they are not a human and even if they are human, the race will be 1,000 to 1, at least. So if we are now 7 billion human beings, that means we should have 7 trillions of the Gog and Magog. And where are they? They are behind the dam. Let us continue. <clears throat> yeah, you know, here, Muhammad is a thief. He is a liar. And he always, as usual, he copies stories from others. The Bible mentioned about Gog and Magog in the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelation. But it's not about what he's saying, nothing to do with what he's saying. But Muhammad, he copied a story. And obviously the story have to come from somebody. And then Muhammad, he add his own spice. As all the stories, like the story of the seven sleepers, the story of uh, 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 the elephants, you know, the army of the elephant, uh, the story of Zulqarnayn, uh, the story of Gog and Magog, all the stories is coming from somewhere. So he says, Zulqarnayn, surely Gog and Magog make mischief in the land. Shall we pay you a tribute 
in conditions that you should raise a barrier between us and them i mean this guy is a king who occupy all the land he take all the money now they will pay him eh, let us continue and then <clears throat> He said to them, okay, bring me a block of iron until they had filled up the space between the two mountains. So take a note, the dam which is built between the two mountains is made of iron. How many thousand years ago? And this iron is going to block the people of Gog and Magog into the judgment day. Muslims, have you ever heard of something called rusty or rust? So he built a dam between us and them. And here you notice the stupidity of the story. Because if you build a dam between us and them, that means the earth must be flat and they cannot go around it. You know, let us say somebody, he built a dam, there is a mountain. And then he built a dam between the two mountains and he blocked the, the area. First, they can climb the mountain. That's number one. Number two, they can go around the mountain. According to Muhammad, nobody can pass that dam. Actually, Muhammad, he predicted that those people will come in his time. Another prediction of Muhammad, which is proving that he's a false prophet. Hmm? Did Muhammad predict that the dam will open in his time? Yes or no, Muslims? <clears throat> Anyone? This is a chapter 18, verse number, you know, we are reading from 94, 96, 90, you know. Yeah. The chapter of the Kif, you know, made by the cave man Muhammad. So what Muhammad he said about the prediction of the people of Gog and Magog, he claimed that they are going to come out in his time. And when he almost died and nothing happened, he says, maybe in later. Let us see together. Read with me and laugh. One day, the Messenger of Allah, SAWSFM TV station, awake from sleep with a flush, flushed red face. He's terrified. He said, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, and he repeated it right. Muhammad, again, the Trinity guy. Anything Muhammad he do, he have to do it three times. He have to repeat, there is no God but Allah three times. A weave to the Arab from the evil down near, down near, when, 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 now, down, down, now, down, 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 Muhammad is scared. Today, when, today, Look, not yesterday, no, brother, it's today. A gap has opened in the wall of Yagog and Magog. <laughs> Muhammad, he said that 1400 years ago. Any Muslim? Hey, Muhammad Hamza, uh, my friend, you are you are you you have a picture of a bully on you, so let me hide you, so nobody can bully you, and call me in pal talk, so they will not bully you. Stop crying. So, guys, today. Today a gap has been opened. Like a hold on. Today. So they are coming out. And he says, Oh, we to the Arab. Muhammad is scared about the Arab only. Yeah, he's racist, you know, he's you know the Arab. Islam is Arab religion. Everything you have to be to do under the control of the Arab. Arab words, Arab language, Arab clothes, Arab food, Arab, Arab. You know, you change your name. You came a Muslim, you became an Arab. You will see a guy from Somalia claiming to be an Arab. A guy from Egypt claimed to be an Arab. Are we to the Arab? 
from evil down near today a gap has been made in the wall of Yagog and Magog so Muhammad he came long long after Azul Qurnayn and finally the people of Gog and Magog they were able to able to open a hole that's mean they are out and he Muhammad he even described how big it is he said like this I said O Messenger of Allah shall we be destroyed while they are righteous among us he said yes yes when the evil abounds uh, what then Muhammad because he cannot keep his mouth shut in different hadith he says a claim clearly that Gog and Magog is from the sign of the judgment day read carefully with me Allah messenger said he come to us uh, uh, all of a sudden and we were busy in discussion he said what do you discuss about the companion they said we are discussion my my mouse again is stuck hold on we are discussing about the last hour Muhammad he loved this topic thereupon he said it will not come until you see the sign before and between two bracket in this connection he mentioned of the smoke of the the smoke that the jail and the beast and the rising of the Sun from the West okay hold on how many things need to happen all those things and they have to come in order all right they have to come in order and then the rising is a sun from the West and we showed you how that will happen in different hadith and the descent of Jesus and then Gog and Magog and then the people of Gog and Magog they will attack Jesus and Jesus and his people they will hide in the mountains. That's deep. That's really deep. I mean, how the prophet he knew this? Do we have any Muslim have a comment about this? Let us go to the books of interpretation so we can read together some of the stories. This is Ibn Kathir. And this is the Muslim translation, and this has nothing to do with me. He will come to the people and call them in his way. Who is going to come? This is supposed to be at the Dajjal. Because at the Dajjal, you know, he will do um, uh, some achievement preparing for the people of Gog and Magog. And then the Messiah will come too. So all those things will happen at the same time, almost. So here he will come to the people and he in his way and he will respond to him and he will issue command to the sky and it will rain. Okay, Muhammad claiming that the false messiah, he can issue command to the sky and the sky will rain. But isn't it, this is against Islam? Isn't it in Islam it says that nobody can Command the sky and the rain except Allah. Let me show you the verses. <clears throat> Muhammad, he said, he just said that he, the false messiah, he will command the sky and the sky will rain. So he said to the cloud, rain, and the, the, the cloud will rain. So what this is verse in the Quran saying? From the signs of God, or let us say from the attribute of God, that he do the following. Chapter 42, verse number 28, and chapter 31, verse number 34. Let us take the shorter one. It is he who sent down the rain. Who? Allah. And this is from his sign. 
Do you see it? Halloween you who is God who is not, the one who command the sky and the sky bring rain. But he just said to us that the false messiah, he will command the sky and the sky will rain. Chapter 31, verse number 34. Surely, surely Allah is he who had is the knowledge of the hour, and he sent down the rain. And he is the one who knew in the womb. And this is again a false prediction. Because he contradicted himself, he just said that at the jail he will order the rain. And secondly, you can go for five dollars and you can check if your wife, she have a boy or a girl. Muhammad, he claimed that only Allah who knows what is inside the womb. This is the sign of Allah. Who knows what is inside the womb? Allah. Who is the one who command the rain? Allah. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? So when Muhammad he made a prediction that the the people of Gog and Magog they came already out. Muslim was this is true or not? Was he lying? Did the people of Gog and Magog came out? And then in the interpretation of Ibn Kathir reporting the hadith of your prophet, saying all kind of a crazy stuff. As an example, the false messiah, he is going to cut a man to pieces and he will put him together again. But isn't it Allah, according to the Quran, is the one who put the bones together after people die? How the false messiah can do that? Then he will issue a command that a man will be killed and he will strike him with a sword and call him into two pieces, cut him into two pieces. And then he put all the pieces together. But the Quran says, only Allah can do that. Muhammad, he cannot say two sentences without contradiction. Who is the one who put the dead together except Allah. Muslims, who is the one who can do that? Allah. Chapter 36, verse number 78. But your prophet, he just said the false messiah, he can do that. But this verse saying nobody can do that, you know, such, such a thing, save Allah. Who, who will give life to the bones? Who, when they are collapsed, the guy is dead. Who is the one who raised people from death? Allah. So how the Messiah can do that? The false Messiah, sorry. So Muhammad, he is like adding some fictions to make his story more, let us say, uh, more dramatic, a lot of attraction, hoping that those uh, like flavors and spices to the stories will make it so interesting and people will be so worried. You know, uh, Muhammad, he play on fear. You know, fear, when fear is your enemy. Fear, all that Muhammad trying to establish is a fear. He wanna keep you busy with stupid stories. Then Muhammad actually, he made more, more fiction stories about this Dajjal. Here we are just showing you an example, you know. But when the Gog of Magog, this is what we want from the story. Then Allah will reveal Isa ibn Maryam, the word of Allah.
and he will tell him to do something. Then Allah will send Gog and Magog. Hold on, Allah will send Gog and Magog. Why Allah want to send Gog and Magog? So those are good people then. They must be Muslims. Because if Allah is the one who sent me to fight Muslims, that means I'm a Muslim, but I have a duty to do. In the front of you, does it say that Allah will send the people of Gog and Magog? Yes. Why Allah want to send Gog and Magog to kill the Muslims? Any Muslim can tell us? Stupid story. And then Isa, which is supposed to Jesus, uh, and his companion, they will they will ask Allah for help. And Allah will send against the people of Gog and Magog insects, which will attack them to attack their neck. And in the morning, they will be perished as one. Like, okay, hold on. So what is the purpose of this story? I mean, you sent us to us, sent to us people who will kill everything, will destroy everything. If they see a river, they will drink the river. If they see a, a lake, they will drink the lake. I mean, how much thirsty they are. They will not stop drinking until the lake is totally dry. Dry like as if there's a thousand year of of a, of of a drought. So all of this, then Jesus he said to Allah, Allah do something, and then Allah he said insects, and the insect attack their necks, and then they die. That's it. So all this drama. I mean, look at this movie. You are watching a movie. And those nations, they are taking the earth left and right. Killing everybody. Raving, whatever. I mean, they are evil. And then when they arrive to Jesus, Jesus, he called Allah, hello Allah. Come on, do something. Allah, he said to Jesus, sure, Jesus, wait. Allah, right away, he said insects. Because Allah, he can command the insect, not only the genie. And then the insect, they come down and they attack the people of Gog and Magog and all of them, they die in one day. And Isa and his companion will come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they were hiding, brother. Actually, in the story, it says that those people, they killed everybody in the earth and what is left is the people of the sky. And obviously, Isa is in the sky. And one of, them, he, one of them, he throw his arrow to the sky and then his arrow come back with the blood, which means they killed somebody in the sky. I mean, who in the world can believe this madness? But the most important part of this story here, that Muhammad is predicting things happen, suppose should happen long time ago. Because remember, he says, like horror, terror coming to the Arab. Today, the people of Gog and Magog, they open a hole like this. Now here the hole and the, the whole opening is different story. Why the hole? I mean, what happened? Why those people are taking them time? Anyone knows? Why is taking them time? To open the hole. <clears throat> yeah, why Jesus involve everything? You, you know, most Muhammad, he have to use his name to make himself a prophet. Why they cannot open the hole? Because they forgot to say inshallah. They forgot what? To say inshallah. Can you believe it? Let me find the hadith. So according to Muhammad, those people, they keep digging in the hole. <clears throat> but each time they do dig, by the end of the day, 
they forgot to say tomorrow will come inshallah and because they forgot to say inshallah Allah will make the whole blocked again let us show you Uh, hold on. I'm trying to find the hate in English. <clears throat> Maybe this one will work. And don't worry, I know that the screen is not on. We will turn it on soon. Here we go, we found it in English. So here it says, Gog and Magog, people dig every day, every day. Enter when they can almost see the rays of the sun. The one of a charge of them says, Go back, we will dig tomorrow. Go back, what? We will dig tomorrow. Then Allah put it back. Why Allah he put it back? You will see later. Allah he put it back stronger than it was before. But remember the one who built it is Zulqarnayn. And that was many, 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 many centuries ago. And those people, every day they are digging. And when they see the, the, the ray of the sun through the little tiny hole, hmm? it's like using a drill, they stop. I don't know why they stop. I mean, continue. Can't you make shifts? I mean, there are billions, trillions of people, you know, I mean, nations. Why, why you stop? <laughs> so they stop and they go home. And when they come back in the morning, they found that this wall became stronger than before and Allah block it again which means Allah he fixed the whole day already dead and then this will continue until when there is time to has come and Allah went to send them against the people so this is the plan of Allah see the drama Allah put them behind the dam is he have a plan okay why he want to send them against the people one day they will dig until they can almost see the ray of the sun and then one of them he will say in a charge he will say go back we will dig we will dig it tomorrow if Allah will Muslims anyone is there but this is mean that those people are Muslims correct This is mean that those are Muslims. So how they are evil then? You see, they believe in Allah. They said, the one in charge, he will say, okay, go back home, dig, dig it tomorrow, if Allah will, inshallah. So Gog and Magog, who they are very evil, they are Muslims. And they are serving Allah. So why Allah want to kill them by insects? And now because they said, tomorrow we will dig, inshallah, Allah let them do it. Isn't it weird? But remember, 
Muhammad, he warned the Muslims that Gog and Magog are coming in his time. If we go back to the Hadith, he says, Are we to the Arab from the evil down near, drawn near? Today, today a gap has been made in the wall of Yagugo and Magog. Like this. Well, hold on. If Allah is blocking the hole every day, why, why Muhammad just did this day, he is worried. I mean, isn't it this is something happening every day? That the, the Gog and Magog, they dig in the wall, they open a hole, and then Allah close it. Muhammad here, he have different reaction. Muhammad saying near false prophecy. People of Gog and Magog, they will come. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? This is again is a false prophecy of the false prophet. Anyone? Why he is so worried about the Arab? Today. Why he come from his dream? And his face is scared, terrified. If not, it will happen anyway. What this is about? Crazy man? Anyone? madness stupidity collection of stories and do you notice that the Arab they knew that Muhammad is a madman that's why they said to him this is nothing but the fairy tales of the ancients did the Arab says to Muhammad that this is nothing but fairy tales of the ancient absolutely many times those who they are arguing with you Look at look at this city, the city verse here. And of them he who hearkens to you, we have cast veil on their heart, lest they don't they understand. Mm -hmm. So why send Muhammad to them if you if you made their heart blocked? And veil over their ears so they cannot hear you. So why you send Muhammad to speak to them? And then they said to him, and they are saying to you, this is nothing but the stories of the ancient. All over the Quran, all those verses, chapters, saying the same. This is nothing but the fairy tale stories. We know those stories. This is the stories we heard from our, our, our forefathers. So what Muhammad is bringing, nothing but fairy tale stories. And if we continue talking about the people of Gog and Magog, you will die laughing because it's endless stories. He is just a fool. Whatever people they say to him, he take it, he put it in his book. And he claim it's coming from Allah. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? And by the way, the Muslims are so confused, uh, Gog and Magog, some of them even believe that they are the Turkish. Can you believe it? The Turkish are Gog and Magog. <laughs> and actually some of them they believe that the Turkish they call Turkish because they've been left behind the dam <laughs> because the word Taraka in Arabic means left like he left something <laughs> uh, 
Oh boy. Any more time? Nobody have anything to say? Yeah, actually, you know, there's many prediction. We will talk about it later with different topic. But one of uh, the comment, he said that the prophet, he predict uh, the, 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 the Muslim will conquer Constantinia. The fact Muhammad, he predict that the Arab will, will conquer Constantinia and they will fight against the Turkish. And this is one from the, the, the things will happen in the judgment day. So Muhammad never predict that Turkish is the one who conquers because the one who conquers Constantinia is the Ottoman. And they are the Turkish. Well, Muhammad was saying the opposite. And actually Muhammad, he is so good in prediction to the point he believed that the Roman, they will be the majority of mankind. Majority of mankind. Let us see. <clears throat> let us see. Let us see. I'm trying to find the hadith. Yeah, there we go. I mean, how Muhammad he knew this? Go right now and check. What is the total population of Italy? Those are the Roman. Actually, they are suffering from decline of numbers in Europe, generally speaking, especially in Italy. You can see that even the prime minister, he made a special message to the people saying, please have more children. Our population is declining. Muhammad saying that the judgment day will not come and that the Roman will be the majority among the people. Any Muslim? Uh, Khalid is ready. Okay, let me see. We'll give him a chance. I will go and see if he is texting me. If not, I will block him. I have no time for kids. <clears throat> yeah, he did not text me in, in bad talk. He's a liar. Where are you, Khalid? Why are you are lying saying you want to call me? <clears throat> well, there will be a million have the same. Uh, come on, just a kid. Anyway, so he did not even text me yet. So all this drama is. One more time you say, text me, I will block you. Stop, you know, playing games. So as you see, all the prediction of Muhammad is nothing but fictions. The sun set in murky water. The sun, he found where the sun rise. He found where the sperm is coming from the backbone of the man. The sperm is coming from the ribs of the women. 
uh, there's a guy his, his name the guy with the two horn even the Muslim do not even know who is this guy I mean who is this guy have you ever heard of a guy his name is the guy with the two horn why he's a cow what his name where he live which kingdom he have a guy with the two horn Don't you have a name? Don't you have a location? And if you go, you will find that, uh, you know, Zul Qurnayn, Alexander the Great, he was a, you know, a bisexual. He sleep with men and women. How this guy suddenly became a prophet of Allah. So Muhammad, anything he see him around him, famous, he will put him in his book. Anything is famous have to come in his book. If Donald J. Trump was exist in the time of Muhammad, Muhammad, he will make a verse about him or a chapter. And the Muslim, they will call it the chapter of the trumpet. All the stories we find in the Quran, we find it nothing but fictions. All of it. And you know, somebody might say to you, well, why Muhammad, he believe in like, there is a Jesus, he exists, because he want to fool you. you. See, which one is easier to come to you and say, let us say you are a Christian. If I am a Hindu, I want to convert you, or if I am, a, I say a person, I am, I believe in Abraham, I believe in Moses. I believe in Jesus, and then I knock at your door to fool you. That's easier, because already you accept those names. When somebody want to put a poison for you, he put it in your dish, not in your trash seat, in the food you eat. Right? Uh, <clears throat> And then, I mean, I challenge actually the Muslims to find one story in this book is not a stupid story. Even when he make a story about Mary, I mean, look at Mary. Mary, a, a woman who uh, uh, Muhammad, he speak about her supposedly that she is a virgin. No man touch her. Okay, that's wonderful. But then there's no mention that Mary, she was engaged to a man, which means she's considered as a married woman. Engagement in this for the Jews is marriage without a sexual relationship yet. Nowhere it says that. In the Quran it says things about Mary which is very funny and very stupid. As an example, Mary, when she when I deliver a child, she, you know, she shake the tree, a palm tree. Okay, how a woman she is, is going in the delivery time. She is going to shake a tree, a palm tree. I want you to try, bring the most powerful man you have, a friend you have, and let us see how you can shake a tree, a palm tree, not just a tree. Look what this guy, Muslim proper, he is saying, just to show you the lies of this guy. He said the, the, the he said the Roman for the Arab is the is the white people, but the Arab are white people, you idiot, you donkey. You see, you see how this is, you know? When he said the Roman, the Roman is a Roman. Well, Muhammad do not know how to say the word white, and he is white, and the Arab are white. But they are desperate trying to find a solution for the stupidity. The Roman for the Arab can be meant, can be meant. Are you guessing? <laughs> The white people, idiot. The Arab are white people too. And they are not Roman. People of Iraq are white people too. And they are not Roman. The Persian are white people too. And they are not Roman. So stop being stupid and silly. Grow up. Grow up. I don't know how your wife, even she can handle to have a husband like you. I feel sorry for her. I mean, this is after you think or you thought about it. So the Roman is not people from Rome. So why do you call them Roman? Secondly, Abbas, 
let us say the white people according to you now just just how stupid you are the majority of mankind are the white people Abbas don't know you have to agree that you are a certified donkey because isn't it true that the Arab the white people are the majority of mankind now are they you're, you're a stupid idiot So what is China and what is Indonesia and what is uh, the the white people are the majority of mankind and this is what we, we did a judgment day. So what will happen to the Chinese? They will die. What will happen to the Asian people? They will fly to the moon. What will happen to the black people? Stupidity. Try to find a solution. You make poo poo. I mean, stupidity is amazing. They have a very low IQ. The Arab does not consider them them white. Okay, what if I show you tons of hadith about your prophet being white? Actually, the hadith we just showed you about Muhammad. He woke up and he say that today they open. Uh, 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 there's a hole open in the in the wall. It shows what. That your prophet, his his face became red. Correct, people. His face become what? Become red. Well, if you are a, if you are a, a black person, if you are a dark skinned person, your face will not become red. There is a video made by Mufti Mink, describing for you how white the prophet is. I look at the uh, I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. One of the most hilarious videos ever, describing how Muhammad looked like. And we can show you tons of hadith. Do you want to call me Abbas in front of everybody? If I don't show endless reference of your prophet being white and so white. You will, you know, I will allow you to call me all kinds of names for five minutes without blocking you. Life on air. Do you accept the challenge? Now you will say the hate is a lie. <laughs> right? Actually. If you see, there is a there is a video. Descendant of a prophet Muhammad. All of them they are blonde, redhead. Guys, descendant of a prophet Muhammad. Finally, one of them is not totally blonde. Do you see them? Descendant of a Prophet Muhammad. I mean, where, where is the... Ah, oh, majority is a strength in number, guys. Majority means strength in number. Not number, it's about strength. <laughs> it says, أَغْلَبُ nas, you idiot, the most of the people. You idiot, stupid, just stupid. Just stupid, just, just donkey. Okay, so why you don't say in the translation they are the majority in, in power? Why the translation doesn't say that? As, as long as this is what it means. It says the majority. It doesn't say it's strong in the, you know. In... <laughs> fix it, fix it. Put makeup, Abbas. You need more makeup. Work harder, Abbas. Work harder. It says the majority of the people, among the people. It means power. So a second ago, it was the Roman. The Roman is not the people, they are the white. Now we get busted with this one. So he changed it. Now suddenly, the majority among the people, it became, they are in power, not in number. This is what happened to you when you you know when you try to defend a silly stupid prophet 
you look stupid too. I mean, how to clear the world? Even this one you want to play with? Even this one? The majority of mankind. As simple as that. Even this one, they try to lie and give you a different meaning. Because obviously, Muhammad, he cannot say this is a weak hadith, this is a sahih, very authentic. So the only way to escape it is to say, oh, it means something else. Yeah. The Arabic is so clear. But what you can do? A low IQ, trying to defend a low IQ. Right? <clears throat> Okay, uh, Khalid, I'm going to block you, my friend. Just go. Stop your drama. Anyone can find me in Pad Talk. How come you cannot find me? Take care. Even Abbas can find me. I mean, even Abbas, the lowest IQ person ever I met in this program, he can find my name in Pad Talk. You cannot find it. How low IQ then you are? Any Muslim want to say something? And you know, if we want to keep talking about Gog and Magog, we will die laughing. This man, Muhammad, is a crazy man, obviously. He is trying to find, uh, I mean, anything to support himself. And all of them, they are fiction stories. Like, who is the one who discovered how to deal with Corona? Go and see the videos of Muslims. Muhammad, he is the one who is to tell us how to prevent Corona. <laughs> is it? This is Muhammad. Is the one who uh, uh, who said that plague is not cannot be transmitted by uh, 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 from person to person. What you will say now? Let us see the hadith. <laughs> yeah, Muhammad, he predicts a lot of things, you know, we have to, uh, we have to accept. I mean, yeah, and then when people start laughing at him, he tried to fix it, but too late. Let us see. What you would say? This is weak. No infection. The translation actually is funny. Adwa is not just infection. See, they, they lie even in the translation. No. It says reading, no infection, or there's no transmission to disease. Just change the translator, look what happened. Down it says no infection. Here it says no transmission for disease. And then he said, what about the first one? If, if, if there is a disease transmission, then who is the one who transmitted the disease to the first one? <laughs> and look, in order to cover the stupidity, they lie in the translation. They say there is no infection. Where is the word infection? Where? There's no infection? This is what it says? Or this is what it says?
and then they have an article about the prophet he ordered us uh, to put your hand in the front of your mouth article is about how to prevent corona but they will not tell you that the prophet was talking about that shaitan he jumped inside your mouth this is the reason not because he is afraid of corona shaitan he laugh at you and he jump inside your opening do we have any muslim final call now uh, you know as you know i don't keep my videos for long uh, so subscribe to those who they are downloading my videos and it's better if you download the video yourself and you save them you can save them in you know like in google drive or etc especially if you find the video very uh, you know informative for you and you need it in the future uh, i advise you to uh, uh, you know create accounts not only in youtube like many there's many websites they are allowing you to load videos and in the same time Subscribe to those who they are downloading the videos so you can, uh, you know, uh, find them when you need them. Because as you see, I don't keep my videos. And actually right now, I'm talking to you and I'm going to delete all the previous videos, most of them. Even though they are very nice and very good and very, very, very provide a lot of embarrassing information about the cult of Muhammad but this is what we do all right any question before we leave anyone all Muslims they can refute me but not by talking to me. They don't. And when we give them a chance to talk, they start saying stupid things. Like the guy who called me three days ago from India. You know, he keeps jumping like a monkey from a place to place. Actually, there is a there is a guy and he's an idiot. He made videos. It's it says prediction of Prophet Muhammad, and this guy obviously is doing it too for the sake of money. FTD and one of the prediction he said in his video that Allah predict that he will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians you idiot stupid this is a prediction <laughs> even this one is prediction <laughs> and it's, the, the funny it says it says it, he did that in the past already unbelievable you know it's very, very prof prof profitable business these days to make videos support Islam. You will notice that if you speak supporting Islam, YouTube will never take your channel down. Will allow you to make advertising, receive donation. But if you are a person who fight Islam, YouTube will strip you from that. Almost every single person who speak against Islam, YouTube took, him, took his uh, donation part down. This guy in his video, he says, and Allah predict that there is enmity between the Christian. It says we made, we made, and we, we, we spread already. Not something we will do in the future. Stupidity. Secondly, that means Allah is the devil. Because why God, he wants to spread enmity between the Christians? Shouldn't he help them to know the truth if they are fooled? No, Allah is the devil. So they are so desperate. Uh, Haras and Ezekiel 38 Magog and, and it's a land yeah but you see no problem it is a land and maybe people who they are in the land they can call by the name of the land no problem that's not an issue but what Muhammad is saying is a different story if you go to the book of Revelation uh, uh, I think chapter 20 uh, you will see uh, speaking about Gog and Magog who will come from around the earth so those are uh, simply is not a nation as much it is uh, people who will you know like the, the evil will become the majority everybody will become your enemy but they, it's not a nation by a name they are coming from all the four corners of the earth uh, so 
they are desperate to find a protection so desperate when Muhammad is nothing but a false man and we prove it to you every day don't forget to download the video we are done for today I want to say thank you for being here and thank you for Muslims for being afraid to call me even though you try to bully me while I laugh at it trust me I'm the last one who can bully the last one uh, I'm trying to read the comments. Yeah. And you know, the funny is, we show them what their scholars are saying, and then they still, they call us liars. Like, you know, if you ask a Muslim, what do you think about Ibn Kathir? He would say to you, he's a great scholar. Okay. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, that's wonderful. For how long you are sure? I'm very, very sure. Okay. I mean, are you really sure, sure? Yes, I'm sure, very sure. Okay. What well, is Ibn Kathir saying? That the Quran said that Allah, He made the man produce sperm from the backbone and the woman produce sperm from her ribs. How sure you are that Ibn Kathir is a scholar? Suddenly they will say to you, uh, Ibn Kathir is a human. Ibn Kathir is a human so a second ago you did not know that he's a human proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women i.e. the fluid yellow sexual the child will not be born except from them but, but the Quran is saying exactly what Ibn Kathir is saying so the second you show them something embarrassing they wash their hand from the person. They wash their hand from their prophet. They wash their hand from the Quran, and they will say, you are lying. But my friend, I'm showing you what is, do you see it in the screen? I'm just reading for you. I did not translate. I did not make a book. You are lying. right yeah so anyway thank you very much guys for being here it's time for me to go and uh, we pray for the muslim that they will see the truth and obviously muhammad does not fit not only he is a false prophet he don't fit even in the school of idiots i mean this guy is the biggest fool ever adam was 60 uh, on toll i mean if you search right now to the tomb of adam you will die laughing where, where muslims they get this from from muhammad I mean, it's a comedy. It's a sad comedy. I'm searching right now, Prophet Adam Tomb. What I will find? Let me show you. If you want to visit Prophet Adam Tomb or a grave, you need to get your car because it's very long. Why? Because Muhammad told them that Adam was so tall. Like how tall? Brother, he's so tall, brother. Okay, brother, how tall? Brother is very, very tall. I mean, look at this. This is the tomb, the grave of Adam. And the funny is that the Muslim, they have a grave of Adam in many places. They have a grave of Noah in many places. They have a, a grave of Irun everywhere. It's a business. It's a business to fool the fool. People, they come, they make donation, they cry in front of the grave, you know, make the, collect money. This is the grave of Adam. What happened? Why? It's, it looked like it's like the Subway sandwich. This is the grave of Adam. Are you sure? Look at this grave. This one is 210 foot long. Like what happened? This is what Muhammad told them. Prediction, prediction, brother. Okay, how come we could not find until now one human being is like this? Like what happened? The Christian they hide the body of Adam and they hide the body of his children. Can we find when a human being is so tall like this? I 
and they found the, uh, Allah he sent Adam in Sri Lanka so now we have to find him in Sri Lanka here we go this is a Buddha temple the Muslim they claim that this is the the, 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 the foot step of Adam but hold on how a person is so tall his foot step is so small compared to his size I mean, look at this footstep. This is very small compared to what you say to us. How we can stand up? Adam, you know, Adam, he sent him Allah in, 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 in Sri Lanka. And uh, uh, Eve, he sent her down in Jeddah. Like why? They came in different parachute. And they went push away Eve. How they met again? And then Adam, he went all the way to Mecca. Like, hold on. How he fell down in Sri Lanka. And Sri Lanka is an island. How he was able to be this, to, 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 you know, like he took a cruise ship. This is the first man. This is the first man. How the first man was able to go all the way from Sri Lanka to India and then all the way to Mecca. And what is that? It's an island. And then how they met together with Eve? They went to WhatsApp or Instagram. And then how he found the Kaaba? And you know, if we ask Abbas, Abbas, do you believe Abbas that Adam was so tall? Let us hear what Abbas will say. What do you think, guys? Before we finish. Abbas, was Adam so tall? Do you believe in that? Let me find the hadith. Did Abbas answer, answer the question? Did he answer the question, not answer? I don't see the answer of Abba. Abbas. Do you believe really that your prophet told the truth when he says Adam was so tall? I'm waiting for you, Abbas. Please answer. Do you think Abbas will answer, guys? You don't? Why you don't? Here we go, guys. He don't, he don't believe in the story. But this is Sahih. Sahih. Why it's embarrassing? It is embarrassing. So Abbas, he is not a Muslim. The one who denied the Hadith, he deny the Prophet. This is authentic. Very authentic. And here you ask yourself, if Adam was 30 meter tall, huh? 60 cubit, according to Muslim, this is 30 meter. I will go with this, no problem. All right. So if Adam was 30 meter tall, how come the Kaaba is six meter high? That's mean the Kaaba is in the size of a coffee table for Adam. I mean, is it funny? that you are so tall and yet you are going around something so small is that the game of the chair huh so the kaaba let me let me try to draw the kaaba hold on What a crazy cult. But nobody wanna think, nobody wanna use his brain. They don't have a brain actually, they stopped using it long time ago. So this is your Kaaba. Hmm? This is your Kaaba. 
and remember the dimension is compared to the size of Adam, uh, Adam. all right so this is your Kaaba peace be upon her may Allah bless her and the black stone with her which we kiss her and we go around her okay so this is the Kaaba and yet Adam his testicles is higher than the Kaaba way higher they will be like here This is the ass of a prophet Adam, peace upon him. So now Adam is going around this. Like what happened? Hey Adam, what are you doing? I'm going around the Kaaba, brother. This is the Kaaba? Uh, look what Abbas he said. Any hadith go against logic? He don't agree with it. Is it logical that that there is a man he will have endless penis? Is it logical that your God will give you women have big boobs? Logic. A Muslim speak about logic. Is it logical that Mary she have no uh, husband yet she give a son? You are a hypocrite liar. Since when you Muslim go by logic? What what is logic in your religion? Any hadith go against logic? We don't accept it. Ah, the sunset in murky water is a logic. The, the, the sperm coming from the backbone is logic. <laughs> Hail is coming from mountains in heaven in the Quran is logic. I'm not an idiot. Mr. Logic boy. Yeah, he, he, didn't, he learned logic. So anyway, all the stories of Muhammad lead us to a, a very, very stupid comedy. That this man, he cannot be a prophet. He's an idiot. Making fun of idiots. Use your brain. Don't let someone like this man fool you. You are a human being. You see, God, he created us all. No matter what is your ethnic, you are white, you are black, you are Asian, doesn't matter. God, he gave you a gift, it's called a brain. He gave us, all of us, a gift. Use it. Otherwise, they will fool you. Allah, he sent the angels to build the Kaaba for Adam. Why it's so small? And how even Adam can find it? It's so small. And just to mention the last thing, maybe. I keep saying the last thing, right? It's very hard to finish the stupidity. Who is the one who chose the location of the Kaaba? Allah. Who? Allah. Okay. Have you ever heard of a of a God? He chose his Kaaba location in the worst and the lowest location in Mecca, where the sewage will flood it every year. Isn't it, this is enough proof that Islam is false? So Allah is the one who chose the location. Imagine you hire an engineering company to choose for you the best location for your house. And this is the house of God, supposedly. And then this house of God, he is flooded by the sewage and the poopoo -poo and the dirt. Look at this guy, he's swimming. This is not long time ago. This is when the, there is a camera, you know? So how it was before the camera? Now we have engineers, now they can direct the water. Now we have the American, we have the European, we have the money from the oil. We can stop that even now it is a flooded. This is how Allah, he chose the location of his house. I'm really convinced that this is a house of God. Look, half of the Kaaba in the muddy water and whatever dirt of animals, camels, you know, those people, they grow everything there in Mecca. And this is an old picture of the Kaaba before the oil start coming, you know, like, I mean, this is new supposedly, but before it became so rich, you know, look at the Kaaba, a bunch of a stable around it, dirt in the floor. Now they have marble 
they have fancy five stars the biggest business it is the Las Vegas of the of the Muslims drugs etc so Allah is the one who select and elect his location what kind of Allah he cannot choose the good location for his house and why Allah don't stop the Kaaba from being flooded by sewage can't Allah do that do we need to wait for the American to fix the issue and the American charge us for the oil you know like okay we will fix it for you pay us isn't it the Kaaba protected from any army to attack it so how this guy Al Houthi is shooting missiles at Mecca how Al Qurmuti he destroyed the Kaaba and he took the black stone for more than 20 years and actually when we say black stone it's not exist if you go right now and search for black stone image you will find there's no stone left this is additional proof that Allah is a lie because if this stone is going to witness for Muslim in the judgment day and if you touch the stone Allah erase your sin so how come the stone is gone there's no stone there's little tiny pieces embedded inside rocks where is the black stone what happened there's no black stone but this is a stone should be staying until the judgment day now we need to need to do maintenance you can go right now and search on google Kaaba black stone maintenance and you will see the guys are putting wax expensive wax they mix it with perfume very very fancy to keep those stones in their place and there's a policeman next to the stones to be sure nobody will unblock it and, and steal it they have a few tiny pieces left you can't even see them actually if you check look this is a close picture to black stone where, where is the black stone where is the black stone there's no black stone this is wax all the brown thing this is wax where is the black stone what happened Allah could not preserve his stone the rat ate it so everything in this religion is a joke black stone from Allah Kaaba from Allah and then we find that Kaaba, Kaaba you know is a uh, 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 is, is a uh, flooded by the sewage uh, the, uh, the black stone is gone there's only slow a few pieces and we have to do maintenance for it and we find that and you know and there's a story about the black stone by the way that the mountain next to the Kaaba he swallowed it during the flood of Noah I mean look at this I mean they have a solution for everything anyway time to go thank you very much guys for being here uh, subscribe to those who download my videos so you can always have them and save them and uh, you can watch them after I delete them. So this video will be staying stay there maybe for a day or two. And then we are going to take it off. And a new video will be there. Thank you. God bless you. And I hope to see you soon. Again, remember, we are here to expose Islam. Muslims are poor people like this Abbas. They are poor people. They are fooled. And we are here to help the fool. If you are fooled, we will help you. We will not. I'm not making fun of them. I'm just making fun of foolish belief. If you believe in something foolish, I have to make fun of it so you can wake up, so you can see, so you can stop being, you know, blind. Stop being blind. And I challenge any Muslim to say that what we showed you on the screen is not your website, is not your images, is not your hadith, is not your Quran, is not your interpretation. We just did read it. We did nothing. And then right away you start denying what is in your books. It's a clear sign that you reject Islam. Otherwise, you will not be suffering to accept them. You will not be suffering to say, yes, this is what my book says. You are suffering from because of your books. Why? Because your books is stupid. And you feel pain that they are showing you what is in your books. And then you go to denial. There's one of two things you do. Either you go in denial or you accept that your book is book of foolishness. And because you think that this book is your identity, you think, I cannot approve what he's saying, so I'm going to fight it back because this is your identity, right? 
my friend, there's nothing that's called identity with foolishness. It's going to be your identity if you decide to be a fool only. And I trust that you are not a fool. For God, he gave you a brain. And this is why we will be judged in the judgment day, because we have a brain, not because we are animals. He will, he will tell you, I gave you a brain. Why you did not use it? Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care.